All right. Well, today we have Alisa Beamish, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I pronounced it right. Uh, you're our friend. Mm -hmm. Our kids are in the same soccer team together. Woo. But we're also in Team Jesus, in a sense, here in Costa Mesa, right? You're part of a church community mm -hmm. that we love. And your pastor has been on the show before. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. Right? Oh, I didn't um, know that. That's where fun. we talked about women pastors uh, in Costa Mesa. We talked amazing. about the Jesus movement and how a lot of this like Jesus revolution really started in Costa Mesa. Even though if you watch movies and stuff, they're going to claim it started in Newport Beach. Mm. I think it's just more glamorous <laughs> than saying Costa Mesa. But anyways, that's a topic for another time. Manchitas, you better be quiet. We have to invite it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a dog. One person and a dog. <laughs> okay, so Millie, take it away. Thank you, Beto. Thank you so much for coming today. Yeah. Uh, I remember last time I saw you, like, you own me a podcast. We tried to do this before, uh, but somehow our lives, busy moms... Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that you work too, mm -hmm. besides to be a mom. And um, yeah, I remember the day I met you was on a was I nights. Oh, yeah. No? Was there when, oh. when we met? Uh -huh. Because our churches were uh, working together. We will throw a party uh, here in Costa Mesa, California, mm -hmm. where all our, we can meet. At, really, Manchitas? Siéntate. I don't know if this guy is going to let us do a podcast today. No, and we pray for no distractions. And here we have Manchitas. He's like the most distracted ever. Stop. No. I'm not playing with you. No. <laughs> uh oh. I'm sorry. He deserves to have his <laughs> testicles removed <laughs> because of that behavior. Manchitas, ven. Ven aquí. Come with me. Well, did you feel like like we are at home? At least, yeah, you know well, this is so. like maybe that distraction for you for you that would you're watching. Um, uh, well, I have an appointment for Manchitas after this, so I I, I don't have time to go home and mm -hmm. you know pick him up. So I decided to bring him. Like, oh, he's such a good behave. Mm -hmm. and he's gonna do great. He's just gonna be there listening. So <laughs> Sorry, good. no. Yeah. Makes it feel like we're in your house, so it's perfect. So that's where we met, mm -hmm. right? I was at nights. Uh, and you were making something delicious, I'm sure, or serving something delicious that you made. Tamales, yeah, maybe? I, I cooked a few times. What were some of the uh, I think of the dishes you made, Amelia, <laughs> at West Side Nights? I did pozole. Mm. Oh, that pozole was good, Beto. <laughs> I just give a, a lot of love, you know, uh -huh. and uh, you I made was tamales the next day. Mm. One time you so make tamales hard. too, no? And one time I make tamales. <gasps> yeah. Your tamales yeah. are the best. Mm, mm. Thank you. A lot of people know me because my tamales. Yeah, <laughs> we call her Millie's tamales. Uh -huh. so good. And then what else did you make, Millie? Oh, the atole. Dishes, atole. The atole. Oh, it's like a drink. I remember, yeah. You know, it like was Christmas vanilla, time, I think. Uh -huh, yeah. Vanilla and coconut. Oh, it's so good. That was so good. Ah, At Christmas yeah. time, will you teach me? me? Absolutely. Okay. So I, I, I just saw something in you, you know, like, oh, hi, this girl, I just want to be her friend. And uh, you're always like so kind with a beautiful smile mm. that you attract people. <laughs> and you also speak Spanish, no? Mm, solamente a un little, poquito. Un poquito. Mucho. Where did you pick it up from? Like, where, where's your Spanish come from? Um, School. I learned school? it at school, yeah. Really? And then my church when I was growing up had... um. Like a Spanish service, my dad would always have us go to Spanish service. Oh wow! So why? Like why did he want to learn? To learn. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow! Where was that? In Fresno. Fresno. That's where you grew up. Yeah, in Fresno. Wow! That's the awesome. joy of California, the yeah. best part of California. <laughs> Fresno. <laughs> yeah. With Fresno the, is an with interesting the town. extreme weather. Yeah. Right. Super yes, hot. So hot super and cold. so cold. Yes. Yeah. So my family is close. In Bakerfield, mm -hmm. and Delano, and McFarland. Mm -hmm. Saludos, familia. Mm -hmm. Love you so much. <laughs> yeah, so... Billy, put your microphone a little more in your face, please. Like that? No, it's like a pointing to your <laughs> neck. <laughs> <laughs> you need to lift it up from the... If you want, I can do it, but I'm going to upset Manchit. There we go. Like that? Don't upset Manchit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, he's quiet. So better keep it that way. So I invite myself to her house, Beto. 
I oh, told her like, yes. I just wanna. What do you do for you know? Like, oh yeah, you know, I have this is my church, and I meet with my friends from church at my house, and I just invite them to a dinner. Like, it's like I know it sounds like a you invite like a f five families, six families for prayer. For pray? Mm. Yeah, we we always just tell our whoever wants to come pray. It's open invitation, but yeah, probably like four or five families come. And I thought, how am I gonna show up with my whole family? We have we're five, <laughs> and it's not such a huge house. But like, you know, I just gonna bring my son in me, <laughs> and um, and it's something I always want to do. I just I I want to open my house and offer. Um, you know, to host, but so much work. I don't know how you do it, you know, because life gets busy. And then. But I think I've been to your house more than you've been to my house. And your house is always spotless. And there's always coffee. And there's always food. You're a wonderful host. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I wish I could do it like once a week. Like everybody come to my house. Yeah. yeah um, yeah, but tell us a little bit more about you. And I know you're a teacher. You teach second grade, third grade. Now I teach art. For right now, I'm teaching fifth graders art. Um, I've taught, yeah, like I started teaching high school and then now all the way down to elementary. I, yeah, I love teaching. I homeschool my kids, kind of. They go to school a couple days a week and then they're homeschooled a couple days. Yeah. That's me. See, that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he ha she have the two beautiful kids, you know, and um, your husband. Hmm. You have a, such a beautiful story, you know, the how you met him, how he was when you met him. <laughs> and Beto, she was, um, what was he said? Oh my gosh, my English. Your English. <laughs> come back, come back. Missionary. Tell mm. us about that. Oh, wow. That's how you met him? Well, we met at school. Um, he was wearing high tops with shoes, and I was like, oh, that kid's cool. <laughs> high tops? Like the, the yeah. little, okay. Nice. <laughs> and falling asleep in class. And I was like, I don't know about this boy, but I like his shoes. <laughs> and we would hang out, and then um, we met in college at Vanguard. And then we dated for a couple years, and then I went to India and Thailand, and he came over and met me and proposed in Thailand, and oh, then we wow. came back here for a little while, and then when I was pregnant with Ollie, we went back to Thailand together. Yeah, so we've done a little bit so together. So how many months pregnant? Um, I found Because he born here. Yeah, he, he was, was born, born here. here. We, we flew back. The last day my doctor would let me fly. I think I was like 36 weeks pregnant when we flew back. We moved there probably when I was four months pregnant, five months pregnant. I don't remember. Yeah. I found out I was pregnant with Ollie in Haiti that summer and Blake wasn't with me. And then we went together to Thailand. So, and then since then we've been back here wow. living our regular lives in Costa Mesa. But we love it. Regular lives? Regular lives, you know, not like uh, in other parts of the world. Yeah. But which was hard. We didn't want to be, we had a hard time coming back. We really wanted to live somewhere else. And we felt like God just telling us really clearly to live here amongst our people and live differently. And mm. we're still trying to figure out what mm. that looks like. Oh. So. Wow. What do you think live differently means? Because, so you were a missionary. That's different. Mm. Right. Or how was that different than living here to come back to a regular life, but being asked to live differently? Mm. I mean, that's an interesting thought, right? Because I don't know. How do you see living here? How was how were missions different? <laughs> I really always felt called to live in a country that didn't have wealth. So, mm. Um, amongst people that were poor and didn't have resources or access to the things they needed. So I was working with women that had been trafficked um, or kids that couldn't afford school. Things like that were always my heart. So coming back to one of the wealthiest places in the world felt really counterintuitive to what I felt like God had called me to my whole life. Mm. And I didn't really know how to do that in this context. 
So um, I feel like we're still, I think it's been what, 13 years we've been here and trying to figure out how how to live amongst such wealth and not be lured by it, but also not be judgmental of people that mm. have wealth and still, I don't know, understand that God loves them as much as the kids I loved in India. I don't know. So still mm -hmm. in process, trying to figure that out. Yeah. You know, because I've been in both places too. I'm not a missionary. Well, I feel like a missionary here, right? Because that's my purpose. I want to share Jesus. I want to live like Jesus. And we all are called mm -hmm. to make disciples, right? Mm -hmm. So that for me is pretty clear. But I had the opportunity to live in Mexico my whole life. Half of my life. I can't believe it how old I am. It's half of my life. So I was 26 when I moved here. Mm -hmm. But before that, I grew up in a kind of poor neighborhood mm -hmm. you know i remember uh when i went i was i, I was raised catholic mm -hmm. and my church you know was like kind of mid kind of ghetto mm -hmm. <laughs> right and i had the opportunity to go to a catholic university christian catholic university and well you can see the difference you know with people with money and but they were i always my, I was huge, having a huge heart, too, because I consider myself poor, but it's always more people, it's, it's always going to be mm. pe more poor people than you, mm -hmm. right? Richer than you and poor than you. Mm. So I remember going to a places close to my house where the kids live in the streets. Mm. They get the education on the streets. They come from school in front, you know, and that was my life too. Mm -hmm. My mom was never home because my dad, he abandoned us and she was the one working. Mm -hmm. So who was watching me? No, and I was the oldest one, mm -hmm. right? So I <laughs> I was playing with my friends outside after mm -hmm. school, 8, 10, 11, and my mom comes home like, come inside the house with the, the chancla in her hand <laughs> running like the that's whole walk <laughs> that's where it comes from house, you know <laughs> okay. oh, poor my mother that's where it comes from <laughs> yeah but always with a huge heart you know i remember one time uh i used to go to this this poor neighborhood and bring them food and toys and just play with the kids mm -hmm. through the school and uh, i remember one time i show up like hey what happened with this little kid Oh, you didn't hear? Their parents burned them. Oh. What? Yes. You know, they were like cuckoo <laughs> drug addicts. What? And they thought, you know what? These kids, I'm done with these kids. <laughs> and they closed them with, key, with a key and they put them fire. <laughs> with them, the parents too? No, 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 no. The, the, kids, kids? the kids and they left. Wow. I wonder if they caught them. I hope so. I don't know, but it was my heart like, uh, I can't believe this. And they were your neighbors? Uh, they, they, no, 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 my, close to my house in Oblatos, La Colonia de okay. Oblatos, with like a lot of, you know, poor, poor, poor place. Oblatos, and yeah, it's known, it's known, I don't know, maybe I, I it's think comparable now it's better, to, but that's it's kind of like saying Compton or mm -hmm. something like that, you know? Or like with the hood, with LA like reference. a lot of drugs and <laughs> yeah. prostitution. And mm. Wow. Yeah. That's was horrible. So sad. Yeah. So I understand the two parts, you know, where I am. But like I always told my kids, that's why that's the reason why I send them to Mexico. I mm. wish next time we'll be like on a mission, mm -hmm. you know, because they're going to a beautiful, nice places too. Guadalajara is beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, and they even told me, mom, the malls are better than here. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't send you for that. <laughs> they love it. Nice places. But um, yeah, that's my, my, my thing too. At the beginning was like so hard on the uh, Anglo community, wealthy community, mm -hmm. because I thought like you guys are mean and you have everything. 
mm-hmm. you know, and that that's my my anger, mm-hmm. and it's happening still. Mm-hmm. You know, I show up to volunteer, and I'm so sorry you're listening to this, but I don't know they will put their time to listen to me <laughs> <laughs> if they they didn't say hi to me at school, <laughs> and um, I show up to volunteer, mm-hmm. and like you're not there. They act like you're not there. Not even, hi, how are you? I never met you before. Nice to meet you. Mm. No, they're on their world. Like, Mm -hmm. not even thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't know these moms. And I'm the one who introduced myself. Mm -hmm. But not to all of them. Because if you don't see me, you know, you don't want to know me. Why wasting my time? Mm -hmm. But if I see someone who's like, hi. Oh, hi. So that's you. <laughs> and I embrace her and I start asking questions and sharing, you know, and I just, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what exactly God told me. Mm. God loves them. Mm-hmm. God's, God used them too. Mm-hmm. And like, hi, that's true. You know, he loves the homeless. He loves the rich. But it's harder for the, the rich accept God in their hearts mm-hmm. because they're so wealthy. They have Everything they need. If they get sick, they can spend their money in the best doctors, mm-hmm. best everything. So they're they're like like their own god, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and with a poor community, they have God in their hearts, mm-hmm. and they have little, and they give you the little they have, mm-hmm. you know, because they know that God is gonna provide tomorrow. Yeah. So you see the difference in. Mm-hmm. I know. I would feel like I was. I was very, very judgmental. Um, and Blake, one time, he was. <laughs> he was like, "Why are you so? The things you're judgmental of, that they like anthropology, these stores, and they yes. shop at Trader Joe's." And he's like, "You shop at Trader Joe's. You love it. You like all the same things. Why are you being so judgmental?" And I had to kind of wrestle with it. I was like, "Why am I so judgmental?" I think. I think in my heart, I feel the lure to money and power and all the things that this mm. place has to offer. And so I think I'm just trying to reject it completely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. in doing so, I'm like rejecting people oh. that are sometimes so lovely and so kind and need Jesus just as much as anyone mm-hmm. else. I don't know. So I'm still. And because they live like a super duper superficial life mm. you know they don't know how mm-hmm. they don't know how to act how to reach out to people how uh, be humble mm-hmm. right yeah but uh, i was watching a beautiful movie but the, the one we watched uh saturday the ultimate gift did you watch that movie it's like from 2005 2007 something like that mm-hmm. pretty old and it's not a huge hit you know it's mm. just kind of like a I don't know, low budget movie, but uh, it's about a, a young man who is going to receive a series of gifts from his deceased grandpa. Mm-hmm. But his grandpa like built a multi billion dollar company, mm. and he kind of saw how money screw his family mm. or ruined his family, and so he says to the to the grandson over a series of videos because now he's dead right mm. so he recorded the videos yeah. before dying and he's like i want to i want to help you out because i feel like you're still savageable <laughs> in a sense like from all the family yeah. you know and and the series of gifts is like basically he needs to learn and appreciate one the value of money the value of work the value of family, like all these things that that to him, because he's the value of sup- a friend of a friend, like all these things that because he's super rich and he grew up with like everything, mm-hmm. like handed on a silver platter. Mm-hmm. He was like, well, I, I have everything I need. It's right? such a good movie. <laughs> yeah. I love the movie because the guy is like, OK, now I don't have money. Of course, you know, if I just need to come and show up with a friend, I'm going to call my friends and ugh, are you kidding me? But he was having no money. They canceled all the, his cards. The mother, they mm-hmm. told him, if you open the door or give him money, I'm not going to give you the money, you know, for mm-hmm. you. So the mom, like, sorry, honey, you need to find that by yourself, but I, I don't want to lose my money, too. So they closed the door at him. <laughs> and he's like, oh, boy. So he, the, the girlfriend, you know, she reacted him, too, because they were on a restaurant 
and he have no money to pay. Oh. And she get offended, crying like, you're asking me to pay for your meal? But, you know, like, what the buy? So he was lonely. <laughs> he was lonely. He have no one. Yeah. You know? So, so but I think, I mean, I think it's such a valuable lesson, right? I mean, I wish more people would watch that movie or even see that type of message. Because mm -hmm. I think what you're saying, so you grew up in Fresno, Right, mm -hmm. so we grew up in America. Like we, we come from Guadalajara, mm -hmm. and Milly kind of share already how life is there, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, but yes, like when you come, especially maybe this area of California that has Newport Beach, mm -hmm. it's always interesting how, like, I have a background in construction, mm -hmm. in landscape, mm -hmm. in you know, like all these things that. Is usually the the jobs that the Latinos are doing mm -hmm. for rich people, mm -hmm. right? Not even not even you know, people use this word here like white people. Not even white people, just rich people. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> all kinds of races and colors. Um, so to me, it's it's more like that um, contrast mm -hmm. that is very noticeable, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of used to that because Mexico is like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But but I guess here is another level. You know, because mm -hmm. now we're talking dollars and we're talking like super, almost like super filthy rich. Yeah. Right. And as a construction guy, I would be working in like Pelican Hills here in Newport Beach, mm -hmm. uh, building mansions. I mean, mm -hmm. houses that are like $30 million, $40 million. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the next door neighbors are like well-known athletes or, you know, mm -hmm. people that invented something. So I know it's crazy. <laughs> it's and you insane. forget how crazy it is the more you're in it and surrounded by it, you start mm. to think that those cars are normal or yeah. you know, whatever. And th that it's normal to see all these like super expensive cars driving on the street. And it's different. I same. So my, my dad hangs wallpaper. And so when I was growing up, we didn't have extra money, but my parents never, I never felt like I was poor. They never talked about it that way. And they were very generous and they always talked about how we had enough to give. So I never thought of being poor, but my family didn't have any extra. And from the time we were in middle school, we would get a little allowance, like we would get $40 a month, but it was like we paid for our clothes. If we went out with friends, birthday gifts, everything we paid for. And then I started working cleaning houses with my sister when I was about 12. Wow. And so... That in Fresno? Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I grew up with as well. And then when I was, so my parents told us from a young age, you're, if you want to go to college, you have to get a scholarship. Like we don't have money to send you to school. And so all of us got scholarships. And so I went to Vanguard and I had a full scholarship. I mean, between grants and scholarships, I didn't have to pay anything. And then I met Blake and it was so, such a hard money was such a big deal to me because I grew up that way. And I grew up um, just knowing the value of money. So I would never miss a class because I had done the math. I knew how much mm. it would cost me for mm. each class wow. I missed. And it was like, I I worked so hard to get here. I'm not missing yeah. anything. Like, And he was sleeping in classes. <laughs> and he drove a brand new Audi that his parents wow. bought him after he crashed his first Audi. And oh, wow. like he had a credit card with no limit. And so it was, we came from such different worlds. And so our wow. our premarital, it was, I think, the main thing we, like, had to work through dating and our premarital counseling. We were like, we don't need to talk about sex. We don't need to talk about communication. We need to talk about money. <laughs> That's all we talked about. It's like yeah. money and how, what do we think about money and how does it define us and how does it shape how we live? And I don't know. I feel like we've kind of come to being on the same page now, but it was such an adjustment for us. But I learned in, rec in and he would tell stories growing up. So there's this one story he tells like that they would go to um, his friends and him sometimes would go to Six Flags after school. And he was like, I think he was like a junior in high school. And he was like, I, I invited, you know, my friend, my friend was always saying, no, he didn't want to come. And finally he was like, dude, what's the deal? Like, why don't you come with us? You never want to hang out with us. And his friend was like, I don't have $40 to go to Six Flags after school. Like, wow, what, mm. is, what is your life? And Blake had never thought about, he had never even wow. considered that, but that was just not his experience, yeah. you know? And so it is, I, I think about that and the process it took Blake to get from like what he understood to like where we are now 
it was years and years and years and so much life experience and us being so poor to get like when when ollie was born we were so poor and blake was doing construction he was making nine dollars an hour i was like home with ollie we were like so broke we moved in with his parents all the things um <laughs> sounds familiar <laughs> <laughs> we cannot relate <laughs> And so him experiencing that with me, I don't know. So it, it's taken such a process. So me realizing now so many people I interact with, I'm like, this is their world. Just like Blake, mm. he is the kindest mm. soul in the world. Mm. Mm. He's so compassionate. He's so generous. He just didn't have any life experience that would have... Shape him. Yeah, that would have shown him mm -hmm. a, a different perspective or what it's like coming from even like when we got married i would make you know some meat and some vegetables and some rice and he would just eat the meat and i was like okay let's talk about the economics of a plate the wow. rice cost <laughs> seven cents to make and yeah. the vegetables were 35 cents and the meat was five dollars you can't only eat the meat like we have to eat the rice and the vegetables so but he didn't know he no one i don't know so wow it's been a process yes but i don't know we've been on this journey too for so long we felt like i felt like money was immoral like if we had extra we needed to give it away and we shouldn't have savings because then we weren't trusting god so we would just give away all of our extra dave ramsey is not happy with you right now <laughs> not at all <laughs> not wow. at all which hey. led us yes. to in a series of events to the place where he was making nine dollars an hour and we had to move oh, in with wow. his parents and we had nothing and so um because we didn't have any backup but in that season we heard from god so clearly i don't know we were so dependent on god for just sustenance that like someone i mean there was this, multiple times but like one time this girl who was younger than us so it was so humiliating but she came and brought me an envelope with money and it had like the exact amount of money we needed for like that week i mean like to the dollar it was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so many things like that where god provided where Because God was providing for us financially, we built this trust that we, in every other area of our life, we just trusted God and we didn't worry or stress. And now we're not in that place. Now we've like, so we've, we're still wrestling with like, okay, maybe it wasn't smart to just not have any backup and not have any savings and not work towards, you know, whatever. So now we save money and we, we have a backup and we have what we need. So we don't have that dependence So we don't hear from God in those same ways. I don't know. So we're like, we don't know what the right way is. Or yeah. I don't know. Oh, I I feel you like 100% because I think for a... Uh, so we're from Mexico, right? And I've said that a million times. <laughs> yeah, and people, they can hear us. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me say why it's so important because yeah. it's kind of like what you're saying, you know, for Blake to like, oh, somebody doesn't have money to go to Six Flags. Well, for us coming from Mexico, making $9, it's like, oh, I'm making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm, I'm rich. Mm -hmm. You know, it's when you start living here that it's like, oh man, <laughs> this is not sufficient, right? Yeah. Um, so that's the hard part. But just the first impression is, man, dollars, I'm, I'm, I'm making a lot of money, even if it's little money that I'm making really, right? Mm -hmm. But to get out of that mindset mm -hmm. is really hard, especially for somebody that grew up in Mexico and has been there for you know, many years. So you see, um, it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of like, I understand what you're saying because it's almost like you think money is bad. Like you think like capitalism is bad, you know, and America thrives on capital. It's like built on capitalism. America, mm -hmm. like it's, it's <laughs> that's, that's its economy, right? And here it's like, I don't know, the, the, the more the the better people at least look at you oh, okay successful you know if you have a mm -hmm. million dollars or whatever it's like oh, okay he's on his way to success like that's what almost like everybody in america is like going for you know how to make more money with less effort mm -hmm. right <laughs> like like the i don't know the the economics of being comfortable and uh that's why you know in america you talk a lot about what do you say, passive income and these things, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. create your YouTube channel and talk about these things. Mm -hmm. And five years from now, 10 years from now, it's just going to come, you know, down the pipe and you don't need to you know, work for it. So America is so much built on capitalism that, you know, coming from Mexico is like, oh, it's, it's almost like it's, it's bad to have money. It's mm -hmm. bad to aim for money. But in a sense, what you're saying is that 
it's not so bad like there's a little bit of like good day ramsey <laughs> in all of this yeah. right and, well, and the other thing because here everything is about money right mm -hmm. nobody does does nothing if it's not money involved mm -hmm. and for me it was hard because mm -hmm. like my one of my jobs you know to be here was being a nanny mm -hmm. but sometimes i see the need and not because uh okay this woman f what i work for she had the money mm -hmm. But she was so beautiful, so sweet, and I saw in her the need of a friend. Mm. And I tell her, I know I'm working today, uh, but you're so kind and you're so beautiful. Look at the food you give us. You allow me to bring my kids to play with your kids. You was here. What a, what a weird job <laughs> I have where instead of everything you did for me and um, my kids are enjoying the pool beautiful mm -hmm. house i am enjoying the food i'm having a beautiful conversation with you mm -hmm. and you want to pay me mm -hmm. like uh you're no way <laughs> i don't want your money i want your friendship yeah and she's like no 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 then go ahead mm. and i think she paid me like for two years mm. and at the end she accepted my friendship. <laughs> now I always tell her, like, now you watch my kids and I don't pay you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Win-win, you know. <laughs> but, but that's the hard part, right? Like, how, what have you experienced in terms of that? Because you said you learn also to, uh, to love people here, right? And, and mm. almost like that sense of like, yes, I was maybe in other places of the world serving the poor. But I guess in a sense, it's, it's a different kind of being poor, right? Being mm. short of friends, mm. being short, like you, you're you big on cash, but short on many other relationships. Mm. So what have you experienced in that sense? You know, even like, I don't know, maybe even with Blake or, um, who, yeah, how do you step into that mm -hmm. that arena of just the, just the situation where we live, right? Mm -hmm. There's people like that everywhere. Have you encountered people that, you know, seem... That kind of all across the board. I have some friends who are, it's kind of blown my mind. So I'll back up a tad. I, I feel like I came from the place too of like money is bad, mm. full stop. So having money is evil. And if you have money, so are you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did something shady. Or yeah. Something. And um, which is hard because my Blake's family has a lot of money. And so that was an, a big adjustment for me and for my heart. Um. But I feel like, too, in a way, I grew up with money as an idol, too. It just looked mm -hmm. different. So I was never able to enjoy things. And even when I was generous, it was like still very kind, kind of calculated. Like, okay, I earned this and I'm giving them this. So I'm like points for me. You know what I mean? Like, mm. and whereas Blake he just doesn't really think about money. Like anything we spent, I was calculating in my head and like, and anything I gave away, I was calculating in my head and he just enjoys things. This is an excess spoon. <laughs> yeah. And he, yeah, he just gives away and he doesn't think about like, and you know, the Bible talks about like not knowing like your right hand, not knowing what your left hand is doing, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I had never experienced that, but Blake truly is that way. He, mm -hmm. if he gives it away, he never thinks twice about it. He doesn't remember that he w was generous. It's like truly from a place of like love and excess and generosity. And I feel like I kind of idolized money in a different way in like the way that I was always thinking. I'm like, I spend so much time thinking about money. And he didn't spend any time thinking about money to a wow. fault, right? Like yeah. probably should think a little bit more about how much he's wasting. Yeah. But I was thinking so much about it that it was ha like still took such a big place in my heart. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's been a process for me. The longer we've lived here, I have several friends now who are really wealthy and are so generous and so kind and so loving and they submit their money like openly to Jesus to mm. use however Jesus wants to use it and they are so they make such a huge impact because they hold it so loosely and i've been trying to wrestle through this place i think for so long i felt like Jesus couldn't trust me with money because if i had money it would take over my heart and i would be evil the way that i saw everyone else was evil wow and i think sometimes Jesus gives us money 
because he wants money in the hands of people that are going to be open with it and advance his kingdom with it. But I didn't think that I could be trusted with that. Do you know what I mean? And I oh, still, totally. <laughs> I still don't, I still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm in process still, but I feel like I have come to a place where I don't, I know that like the love of money is evil, not necessarily money itself, but I think it's like such a powerful lure that I'm still so afraid of it. I don't know. I don't know if I even answered your question. I just was like, <laughs> well, I, I've never answered my own questions, but I love the wrestling. <laughs> yes. I love the wrestling with And, and with Speaking as humans, we're a case. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, he, God knows our yeah. heart. You know, and he give us what he needs is good for us. Yeah. So for me, it's like, okay, I'm your daughter. You know, you're my amazing, beautiful, perfect father. So I trust you. What are you doing with me? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I trust you. And if I don't have money right now, I know that I just need to pass the test. Mm -hmm. I need to wait for my full transformation, my full you know you're going to change my character and you're going to transform my mind hmm. so i need to stand firm i need to keep trusting you because when you don't have faith you don't have hope mm. and if you don't have hope you're dead how you can live freely mm -hmm. right if you're just looking at your problem so sometimes i've told it i need to get out of me and see me from far mm. and i'm with jesus hanging out here mm -hmm. and i'm just looking at me like look at that girl jesus you don't know what to do what to expect she needs to understand that you're working for her mm. right i just need to wait and the other day uh you know how my son is going to uh, Spain, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to, need to work right. to fundraise all the money. Uh -huh. So basically, we're se selling tacos, burritos, tortas, pasele, pasele, guandola, guandola. very hard. <laughs> so I'm working there, and this guy just look at me, you know, uh, he's working there too. He's like, look at her. She doesn't look like she belongs here. You know, uh, she doesn't look like a taquera, the taco guy, you know. <laughs> And, and I was like, yeah, right? And inside I'm like, I know I'm pretty. I know I'm, I'm prepared. You know, I have a master's degree, of course. I know what he's talking about. <laughs> and then I just, you know, I keep that idea in mind, like, you devil. What do you think who I am? I'm a server. You know, mm -hmm. I came here to serve. And I'm no better than anyone else. Mm. But uh, it's so easy, you know, like he mm -hmm. talked to me here in my ear. Like, oh, look how great you are. What are you doing here? Mm -hmm. Selling tacos. You don't belong here. You you don't look like you are the people who is working like that. And I remember, you know, I had a tough time to clean houses. Mm. I offer myself, uh, all my friends, all my rich people that I know, mm -hmm. like, I can come and clean your house. Mm. Oh, I'm looking for a job so hard. Mm. No, my appearance I don't look like I clean houses, mm. you know, <laughs> or sometimes I don't know if they don't trust their husbands mm. because I'm pretty, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, um, I but, yeah, but God is always working in my heart. Yeah. You know, I'm no better than anyone else. I think, too, it's a different. Um, I think people are humiliated for a friend to clean their house. Like it feels. um mm. It feels really um, weird. Mm -hmm, it does. We don't yes. like know what to do with that. Because, yeah, we do. We assign like value to different roles. And it's like, wait, you can't be in this role if you're my friend. You know uh, what I mean? I never thought about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My sister and I used to, when we cleaned wow. houses, there was a couple houses we cleaned that we didn't know them. And it then there was one lady and she went to my church and she was like, she is one of those people. She was like such a lady like she always wore fancy hats and i mean like she was from the south and she was so fancy but loved the poor like and our our church had my church i grew up in was such a unique place it was so diverse so many different cultures we had the chief of police and a huge gang outreach and we wow. had like this huge bus ministry for all the kids that lived in the neighborhood that were mostly experiencing poverty. And this woman, like she 
there would be like filthy kids climbing all over her in her fancy clothes and she didn't care she just was so wow. loving and so generous and i remember like we would clean her house and to me it felt weird that it was like I felt like it should be embarrassing for her mm. or someone she knew mm. to be cleaning her house. I don't know, but she just like did it with such dignity. Like she gave everyone, she didn't assign like value in that way. So she would just chat with me while I was cleaning her toilet. <laughs> I don't know. She just was so nice. And, but I don't think I would be able to do that. Cause again, for me, I assign values to things, but she, I don't know. It was, it really blew my mind. I'm like, how can you be wealthy? And her husband was a surgeon. I'm like, how can you be wealthy and have all this and still interact with such ease you with know, people I, in a different yeah. class? I, 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 I can feel people, you know? Mm -hmm. So I remember one time I show up to a, a, a party and I see this girl, you know, and, all my friends are the, on the other side. And I was with her and her family. And I was having a conversation with her. And I was looking, oh, my friends are with her. But imagine how she's going to feel if I move from this table. Mm -hmm. So I went, I say hi, and I came back. Mm -hmm. Alisa, she cried at the end. I say goodbye when I, I was time to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here with me and she was crying mm. and like oh, thank you jesus you know because i i hear you and i was just obedient mm -hmm. and the same thing happened to me that you know we were on the picture for our kids are playing soccer so they were having a picture mm -hmm. and i see this girl and that that face is so familiar but I didn't ask her name because I know you. You know me. <laughs> Too late. And we were just talking and how are you, blah, 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 talking about life and everything. And again, I see my friends from far away. And like, oh, they're looking at me. I, I just, I can't wait to go and hug them and mm -hmm. having a conversation with, with her. But I thought, ah, oh, but I'm missing this person, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm in such a deep conversation that's mm -hmm. going to feel like awkward, like, cut and go mm -hmm. over there so so i decided to be with her and the whole time and was so special i enjoy it she enjoy it we mm -hmm. we know and i'm come home i'm I, i'm coming home oh, I'm, i was at the house and thinking like who is she who is she? <gasps> she works at the market close to me mm. and she always say hi and good morning to me <laughs> so i knew it yeah that she, she's so familiar yeah. yeah i don't remember her name too bad millie <laughs> <laughs> i need to know their names <laughs> but she felt special yeah i feel special you know when mm -hmm. just in the supermarket you're always running like hi bye hi bye you know mm -hmm. like I, I i love to notice people see mm -hmm. people you know and the other thing i do at school I go and I hug all the babysitters <laughs> and I scream at them, you know? Yeah. Uh, because God sees them. Mm -hmm. And so, in that school, people don't say hi to each other. Yeah. Not even them, you know, they're, they're just here on their phones. Oh, I hate they they that. don't see people. They don't talk to people. They're just waiting for their kids to come and go. Yeah. Or they have their own people. Yeah. You know, the, so and me, I'm like, hi, 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 you mm -hmm. know, to, to see uh, who is my next. Yeah. Oh, you know, like Tina is like, hi, Tina. And I go and I hug her mm -hmm. and I kiss her. You know, how are you, Tina? How's life? You have mm -hmm. more hours? They're giving you a little. Oh, my gosh, Tina, that they need to give you more hours, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But that's okay. So I feel like I'm wired the same. And I, the people I see and notice and want to give like respect to are the people that I think other people are overlooking, right? Mm. But in doing so, I'm doing the same thing sometimes, but in reverse of like our culture, right? Where I'm like, but if they're rich or they look put together, I'm like, mm. I'm so judgmental. So I'm like, I'm doing the same thing they're doing. I'm just like flipping it, but it's still the same like judgment in my heart i don't know so like what you're saying like i want to be present for whoever it is that god puts in front of me and not care what their background is or what they look like or if they're white or they're latina or whatever but i don't know it's so hard i i i try to be with everybody the same uh -huh. but the people who have a lot of money 
and they have a status, it's hard for them to receive that. Mm -hmm. They push me. Mm -hmm. And they would even say, I hate hoax. Mm. Oh, you know, I'm a hugger <laughs> person. I love to hug people. Oh, me too. But she told me that I will never do it again mm. because I also respect people if you don't like hugs. Mm -hmm. like, but sometimes when, you know, if people know me a little bit more and mm -hmm. they, they know that I'm um, authentic, mm -hmm. that I'm not coming to get something from you, mm -hmm. I just want to be loved and I want to mm. love people, mm -hmm. right? And Isn't that so sad, though, that people wouldn't assume that? That it would be like the last mm. the last thought, oh, you actually want to be my friend. or You know, like, that's so sad. Yeah, because mm. they're thinking... I, I would love to know what they think about me. I never ask them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we want to know. <laughs> but, but you know what? I, did, I, I just... I just love Jesus so much and I walk trying to be obedient mm -hmm. and give his love around. Mm -hmm. Because one time I was like, God, why you build me like this? Why I care so much what people think or how people mm -hmm. act or how people there are with me. Mm -hmm. You know, why I'm not like her? She could less, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm worrying different. Yeah. You know, in, in, in a lot of things, my, my background, no, coming in a dysfunctional family, so many uh, lost, you know, being a little child, I lost so many members of my family that I'm just in need mm -hmm. for love. Mm -hmm. But when God comes and I receive him, it's like, hi, what is this? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Now you understand that when we're walking without him, it's like having a hole empty. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's a piece who really is exactly the same measure, the same size to come and, mm -hmm. and como se dice, embonar? Embone. Embone pretty good. Mm -hmm. he's, the, he's the only one. Mm -hmm. And and it's amazing. And how I, mm -hmm. I just want people to understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, that Jesus is everything we need mm -hmm. because as a human, nothing is enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes we're like, I remember, you know, working so hard for my boyfriends to love me so I can have a husband and have a family. Mm -hmm. And they broke my heart so many times, mm -hmm. you know? So I put men in my life like so high mm -hmm. that I was broke. All the time. Mm -hmm. But when I choose God, like you are my Lord, like my Lord and Savior. You are everything I need. Mm. And he starts fulfilling all my needs. Mm. And then Beto appears. Mm. Right? My best friend, my husband, my everything I will never imagine mm -hmm. having a life what I have. Mm -hmm. Full of love mm -hmm. and compassion. Mm -hmm. Because he have Jesus in his heart. Mm -hmm. You know? Working with my kids, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I just, I wake up every day and ask, I ask God who I'm going to meet today, mm -hmm. who I need to talk with mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. fulfill me with your love. I just, that's my purpose because when I'm not doing that, when I'm not going outside and look for people, mm -hmm. I feel depressed. Hmm. It's weird. It's weird. I'm, no, I'm such an extrovert people yeah. that they give me energy. Mm. If you have no talking with people, I was like, <laughs> so sad, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> such in a bad place. Mm. Like sometimes I tell Beto, you didn't say hi to him. <laughs> but Beto's like, you know, he's an introvert. <laughs> I mean, let me hear, you know, I'm comfortable I'm and... I'm scared. I, and for me, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's end on this. Our our oldest son is in Pacifica, which is a Christian school, where probably a lot of the kids that go are super wealthy, right? So mm -hmm. they're the Blakes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they're the Blakes of our community, and one of your kids. No, it's on the journey to start a Pacifica. So I think as a parent and maybe even with all the experience you've had, you know, growing up in Fresno and that, you know, finding uh, your loved one who 
who's kind of like on the opposite end of the spectrum mm -hmm. financially, you know, like, oh, he gives it away and money is not a big deal for him. Uh, what would be maybe some of the, I don't know, tips or recommendations or how would you, how would you even approach it or what, you know, what type of recommendations you would give us as parents, you know, as, as our boy is relating with, I mean, because uh, we'll just be super open, right? We, we're probably on the lower end of the spectrum financially. And for him to be in this school, he's probably going to be the kid that one day is like, man, I cannot afford to go to Disneyland or mm -hmm. you know, Six Flags mm -hmm. on the weekend or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some of your, I don't know, what's your heart towards that? Yeah. Whew, yeah. I think you guys are already doing what I would say. Like, mm. your kids experience so much love in your home that they already have eyes to see. And I know Joseph already has eyes to see because mm. he's already talked about it. He has eyes to see when people are poor in other ways besides financially. You know wow. what I mean? And so, he's learning from you guys not to value money as like the primary indicator of how full your life is you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so i think you're already doing it and showing him what it means to live a full life regardless of what your financial status is and he'll interact with people that that have a full life and experience jesus and have money And he'll interact with kids who have money and are so empty. And he'll be able to see the difference because he's experienced like authentic fullness in your home. You know what I mean? He's experienced love and closeness and vulnerability and humility. Yes. Like he's, he knows it and he's experiencing that and he finds value in that. But it is like, it is hard though when you're surround, when the norm, Because Blake and I have experienced this even with, um, you've been to my house, like, I live in a really nice place. I live in a two-story, two-bedroom townhouse. It's really nice. It has everything we need. It's beautiful. Everything works. It's plenty of space for us. But the more time I've spent in community with friends who all own houses, the more it's like, oh, like... I think I need a home. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? It does. It's When it's, is it going to be my turn? Yes. It's really hard to be immersed in water that, that makes that makes it certain things feel normal and feel like a right and feel like something you're entitled to and not like be shaped by that, you know? So I think it's still important for him too. Like when I was growing up, I had friends that were, my school was a magnet school. So it was in a really bar, par, bad part of town. And I grew up in a pretty bad part of town, but I there was kids there who were busted in from other areas. So I had wealthy friends, I had poor friends, all kinds of friends. And I think because I interacted so often with people experiencing poverty, I saw like both ends of the spectrum. So to me, and because my parents didn't talk about, they never talked about us being one of my best friends. They had more than us financially, but her parents were always talking about how they needed more. And they were always like working really hard and would talk about how they were, they would talk about why they were earning money and why they were working towards it. And my parents always talked about how we had more than enough. Mm. And they always talked about how we could be generous because we had plenty to share. And so it never crossed my mind that I was poor. And when I was, I think I was 16, I was either 15 or 16. I had a sleepover at my house and I invited all my friends from school and a couple of the girls couldn't come. And I, I was kind of teasing. Them. I was like, why are you, why can't you come? What are you doing? And they got really uncomfortable and looked at each other. And I was like, something's, ha something's going on. I don't know what's happening. Mm. And the one, one of the girls was like, okay, fine. Like our parents won't let us spend the night on your side of town. And I was like, Wow. Oh, and it had never crossed my mind that I lived in a bad side of town. And then once she said that, I like put pieces together wow, and I was like, it's so funny. oh yeah, so this, funny. This, this and this. But like I was 16 and wow. I didn't know that I was poor because my parents always talked about how we had enough to share. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't talk about what we couldn't do. And so I don't know. I think that's really important with kids. Wow. But I'm in the same with mine. I, you know, like my yeah. kids are surrounded by a lot of wealth and 
I don't know. Some things yes. hard not to normalize. Mm -hmm. And Jesus had, I mean, it's like he had Matthew, right? Who was formerly um, tax collector. Mm -hmm. So he was probably super wealthy. And then he had Peter who was a fisherman. So maybe not as wealthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? mm. And so, I mean, that's interesting. And even, I mean, this is kind of like the chosen, right? Because uh, they go <laughs> a little bit off script with the bible but uh you know imagine matthew uh becoming you know in love with someone like uh, mary of magdala mm -hmm. right who was kind of like you know a little bit more like on the poor side right mm -hmm. evil possess <laughs> <laughs> well, formerly and that. But, but uh but that that uh i don't know dichotomy right of being raised or not not even race, just interacting with people of different economic uh, stratuses. That's that's so interesting because Jesus did that. Mm -hmm. He hung out with all kinds of people, right? And even his some of his followers were people who were in the what was it the uh, there was a woman Joanna who was kind of like the wife of Chusa, and Chusa worked for the king of the mm -hmm. era right so probably wealthy mm -hmm. right and she was following jesus she was following mm. the christ right so you have this amalgamation of different socioeconomic you know type of backgrounds yeah. all following jesus mm -hmm. so that's so interesting because i feel like that's that's kind of like where we're at right now you know and, and your point is like love people the other day we were talking to a jewish woman and Millie was talking about that you know the the whole thing with like oh you know the 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 what is it called you want to go i need to go but okay, i just wrap I, it up here but then. you guys no finish you can finish it i just wanted to say something that god is for everybody god is for all of us poor rich he came for the lost mm -hmm. and we all get lost you know so it's so challenging and i know god is fulfilling us with his love and his knowledge to reach out people you know and we can act like them. We can act, I can act like rich, mm -hmm. you know, and I can act like homeless. You know, you, you want to see me when I'm, I'm shopping at your sales? <laughs> I'm job, you know? Okay. So thank you so much yeah. for coming over. I will say goodbye, but you guys can no, continue. No, we gotta go. We can. Yeah? Yeah. Just oh, wrap it up. I'm sorry. Say, say your last. Uh, your My last has have a doctor's appointment. <laughs> Poor guy. He's just there, like. I right thank there. you so much. Uh, Hopefully you, um, this is tu casa, mi casa, mm. you know, so you're welcome anytime. Me. Thank you for all uh, your work. Mm. Thank you for being the light and the salt mm. you guys in this too. world. It's Love so amazing. Uh, I'm so thankful for, with God so we can coincide in the same life. <laughs> we can be in, in this time, in this moment for him. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you that you are watching. Please subscribe. Please share this uh, to your friends and family. Whatever you think is going to be helpful. Thank you so much for being with us. Manchitas we love you and you see you in the like next cat. time. <laughs> Bye, Manchitas. I but love you, bark, man. So. Manchitas. <laughs> what do we give Manchitas today? A pow pow. An emoji. Which emoji we give him to finalize? <laughs> Manchitas? <laughs> you get the blasphemous emoji today. <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs> Thank you, my friends. We'll see you guys on the next one. You can visit us at christianpodcast.com. Bye. <laughs>